Hello everybody, I am Mas Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics and today I will show you a induction stove. Uh, it's a uh, portable induction stove from uh, IKEA. It's a 2 kilowatt unit and it's uh, rather cheap, it's only 40 euro. So um, I want to take it apart, do some measurements and let's see what kind of power electronics uh, we get for uh, 40 euro for a 2 kilowatt unit. And I don't know how far I get, but in the future, what I want to do with this is uh, abuse it for a uh, induction heater and maybe a Tesla coil. But uh, first, let's see what's inside. So to the unboxing of the unit, uh, it comes in a here white plain cardboard box. It's named uh, Tilreiter, which is Swedish for uh, preparing for preparing a meal. As you can see, it's easy to bring with you if you're going camping and have power available. That is, of course, their purpose with us. Um, it doesn't really have any stickers that said anything about uh, power usage or so. So uh, let's see what's inside. So here we have it, nice and shiny. Um, yeah, let's take a closer look. There's a warning, this is a hot, hot surface uh, sign in the corner. We have a uh, aim here target for your pan, so you do not like place it over here, but certainly be sure to place it in the middle. There's a simple control panel, lock, timer, minus plus, hmm, pause, power, who knows what that is. Two lines, the most important control. Um, so we have the uh, the power cord up here. There is uh, the uh, coat hanger function, so you can place it nicely on your wall. So the back side induction hub H O B. Hmm. Wonder what that is. Rated power two kilowatts. Rated voltage two hundred thirty, two hundred twenty, two hundred forty volt AC. And yeah, it's the C marked, double isolated, has a cooling fan. So after we have seen the uh, relatively simple controls, um, I have now powered the unit up again. Um, we can see the uh, charge lock is uh, still active. We have the power on over here. And I noticed a funny thing uh, that um, if you try to turn on this unit while the charge lock is active, it will just beep uh, with an alarm and do nothing. But uh, notice what happens to the fan. So every time it beeps, it beeps three times if you try to turn it on with the charge lock on. But it seems that the whole unit actually kind of powers up the control logic. Why else would the fan go with the beeping? But let's try to unlock it. And then try to start it. I don't know if you can hear it, but every time it beeps, the fan would also go down in speed. This uh, seems like a whole lot of battery. Very, very cheap. But uh, let's see what this saga can do. We quickly see that this is cheap for a reason. There is absolutely nothing inside. We have the large work coil. There's a sensor in the middle. We have the control board and as we can clearly see, this is made in China, even if it doesn't say it's outside of the unit. Um, this is just a touch, touch panel. It's just uh, some springs for capacitive uh, coupling up through the, the glass plate. Uh, down here we have the control section. Seems there is a single IC controlling this. Doesn't really say what IC it is. It has a sticker on top of it. 
Um, the power electronics seems rather basic. We have uh, one end connecting here, other over here. Two large capacitors, eight and ten microfarads, two inductors, heatsink. Well, if I had to take a guess, this is just a simple Royer induction induct uh, induction heater. Nothing else. Maybe with a little control, but maybe I'm wrong. We will take a take a look under this heatsink and see if we can get that up and see what's underneath. So with the heatsink removed, um, we can see that we have a uh, full bread rectifier uh, sitting at uh, one part of the uh, heatsink, and at the other part it says IGBT 20 amps, 1200 volts. This uh, basically just switches the uh, the rectified uh, AC input to DC. It only has 10 microfarads of uh, bus capacitance. It's a single switch uh, topology. Uh, the resonant circuit is formed uh, between the uh, the work coil and the eight microfarad capacitor here. Um, if we take a look at the back side of the PCB, we can see that the control section has a lot of its passives uh, on the back side. And we can see the power traces coming up from the uh, power input. Goes all the way down here, and we can see the power traces where it has two capacitors marked here. Um, that's the resonant circuit. So uh, I will put this back together, and uh, you can follow me in part two of this for measurements. Let's see what the resonant frequency this works at and what voltages the inverter puts out and so on. So uh, look up part two. Another thing. Warning. Do not use if you have a pacemaker implanted. At least keep your chest a minimum 30 centimeters away. And that just do not stab it, do not pour water on it. How it works what to do if, what to do if I want to build a Tesla coil, what to do if I want to melt metal, no it's not in here, but it has some error codes, which indicates that uh, the cookware is not suitable for induction cooker. Well, it tells me there may, might be some sensor that I have to override later. Uh, if you want to throw it out, it says uh, pull the mains plug out of the mains socket, cut off the mains cable and discard it. Well. Maybe I should number this so you don't just take one bullet point, cut off the mains cable while it's plugged in. It's after all like here. Why would they even risk me taking that bad choice? And it seems that we are not covered by the guarantee if we deliberately take this apart. But they do say damage. I don't intend to damage it. I just want to use it for something else. Well, waste of forest.